Welcome back everybody. In this video we are going to be talking about dynamic rounding. And by that we mean rounding to the first two or three digits of a number regardless of how big a number is. So as opposed to rounding to pennies or dollars we're going to say figure out how big a number is and just keep the first two or three digits of that number. This is going to be really helpful for when we have very large fact tables full of uh, numbers that have kind of false precision. And by that I basically mean estimates. So if you've got a big giant fact table with a million rows or a hundred million rows of estimates, well those estimates probably have numbers all the way down. So it says something like 32.478312 million dollars for this particular job. It's an estimate. Really the first three digits are all we care about. 32.0 or whatever it is, right? So we're going to round to just those digits which is going to decrease the number of distinct values in our column which is going to compress the heck out of our table and make it perform a whole lot faster for our end users. It's pretty easy to do and I'm going to show you how to do it right about now. So starting off, we are here in you store me right rounded baby, right rounded in a record baby, right round rounded dot PBIX. And uh, here on the sort of first page, we have a bunch of stuff that I'm going to ask you to ignore for a minute, right? Uh, what I'm going to draw your attention to over here is that we've got three tables. We've got a location table, right, uh, where we have all of our different locations that stuff happens. And we've got two tables here for estimates. So the idea is that we have a bunch of work that we, uh, we may have to do over the next year or something like that. And for every single job, we have uh, a cost estimate associated with it. So let's go look at those tables. In, in particular, I'm going to look at the estimates table, right? Because uh, this one that's called estimates rounded, we actually haven't rounded it yet. So right now, these are identical. So let's focus here on the estimates table. And in the estimates table, we can see we've got about a million rows. That's a, roughly as many rows as you could squeeze into an Excel workbook. And uh, each row corresponds to some job, and we can see the cost estimate for each job. Now, the thing is, uh, these cost estimates, these are coming out of some statistical program. And if you've ever worked with output of a statistical program, you will know that it gives you a bunch of what you might call false precision, right? So, like, if we look at, um, I don't know, this job right here, right, the $400, uh, 23 cents, and, and 8 tenths of a penny, right? Now, is it the case uh, that it's going to cost exactly that much money to do this job? Well, no, of course not. But when you spit out a number from a, um, a statistical model, you will get a, a whole bunch of digits, even though really uh, most of them aren't that meaningful, right? Now, uh, you will also notice down here where it says we've got about a million rows, you'll also see there's about 930,000 distinct values in this column, right? Because we have all that precision, we have all that precision, almost every single one of these values is unique, which means the compression on this column is absolutely terrible, right? Now, what we'd like to do is we'd like to say to ourselves, you know, most of the, uh, the numbers, or I guess I should say the digits in these numbers, aren't that meaningful, right? So this uh, 33,880, well, really, uh, anything past the 33,000, I don't care about. I think it's, you know, that stuff, it's not really meaningful. What I really care about is maybe the first two or the first three digits. So what I, what I want to do is I want to round to those first two or three digits and just get rid of everything else. And in doing so, in doing so, I won't lose much precision because these are all guesses anyways. What I will do is have a lot more duplicate values, which is another way of saying I'll have a lot uh, fewer distinct values, which means my compression will go way up, and I'll have a much more responsive model. Okay, So uh, here's how we're going to do that. So uh, we've already got the estimates table. If I come over here to estimates rounded, you'll see right now these are identical. Right, because we haven't done the rounding yet. That's what this video is for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head up here to home. And I'm going to find the Edit Queries button. Now, if you can't see that, I'll pop this open. I guess it's Transform Data. They change the name. Eh, they actually don't change it that often. I just, I, you know, old habits. Okay, so I open up my query editor, right? And uh, we will see over here I've got uh, two queries, estimates and estimates rounded. We're going to leave the estimates alone, mainly because we want to compare and contrast uh, the two tables when we're all done. So I'm going to click here on estimates rounded. Right Now, uh, there are fancier ways to do this. What I'm going to give you right now is a pretty easy one that gives you most of the benefits. Okay? The hardest part of this method is going to be keeping track of whether we're in the transform part of the ribbon or the add column part of the ribbon. Otherwise, almost all of this is done just through the, gra through the graphical user interface, just clicking buttons. 
Okay, again, we're here in Estimates Rounded. Uh, we want to round this cost estimate, so go ahead and click on this column, right? So cost estimate is selected. The first thing we're going to do is take the base 10 logarithm of this column. What does that do? Uh, well, you don't actually have to know. What it's roughly going to do is uh, give us an indication of how many digits are in each one of these numbers. So I've got cost estimate selected. I go here to add column. I head over here next to the calculator is scientific. And in there is logarithm and base 10 logarithm. Right? And this is going to tell me roughly how many digits are in each one of these numbers. Now what I want to do is I want to take this number and round it down. Because I don't care that there's 1.0947 log 10. I just want 1 or 3 or 2 or 5. What's the magnitude of each one of these numbers? Okay, so before I said the hardest part of this uh, whole process is keeping track of whether you're in transform or add column. Right now we're in add column. I'm going to click on transform because I want to change this column in place. Okay, keep in mind I'm here in transform and then I've got this base 10 logarithm column selected. What I'm going to do now is head over here to rounding, which is right next to scientific, which is right next to the calculator. I'm going to click on that, and I'm not going to do round dot dot dot. I'm going to do round down. We'll do this one in a minute. First, we want to round down. There we go. Okay, fabulous. So we're actually most of the way done. So uh, what I want to do now is I want to take this number, which roughly represents the magnitude of each one of these numbers over here. Is it tens, hundreds, thousands, etc.? And I want to flip it. Uh, the reason I want to flip it is uh, when you say that you want to round to two decimal places, what you really mean is that you want sort of negative two decimal places. So there's like zero right there. You go over one to the right, that's one. You go over one to the left, that's that's two, right? But really that's negative two, right? So what we want to do is to get that lined up, we're just going to flip these numbers. And if you don't understand that, don't worry about it. The only thing you have to do is multiply these numbers by negative one. It's just that easy. Again, make sure we're here in transform, not add column, but transform. Select that column, go to Transform, do Standard, Multiply, and we're just going to multiply this by negative 1. Negative 1, just as easy as that. I click OK. Good, now I've got these guys flipped. Now, uh, this next bit is uh, reasonably important because now we're about to determine how many digits we want to round to. If you leave the numbers uh, as is like this, you will round to the very last digit. So that'll become 3, that'll become you know 90, I should say that'll become uh, 300. That'll become 90. Uh, I think keeping one digit, even in the the, uh, if your users are are very okay with this method, is just a little bit too much rounding. So what I want to do is I want to keep uh, two digits of precision. So to do that, again, I'm going to make sure I'm in transform. I've got this column selected. I'm going to head over here to standard, and I'm going to add uh, one. Right now, if I add one, I'm going to keep two digits of precision. If I add two, I'm going to keep three digits of precision. So we'll start with one right here. Click OK. Good. Now notice all the numbers jumped up by one. Now if I was being really good, I'd be renaming these steps as I go. I'm going to rename this one in particular because it's important. So I'm going to rename this um, addition, in fact, I'll capitalize it, additional units to round two, I guess. Sure, something like that. Okay, good. So now we've got uh, our number and how many digits we want to round it to. Okay. Now, uh, this part you don't have to do, but I highly recommend. We're going to have to modify some code in a second, and so I want the name of this column to be a lot easier to type in. Also, base 10 logarithm. This thing hasn't been a base 10, lo base 10 logarithm for a while. So let's just double-click on this column, and I'm going to rename it uh, RT, uh, the number of digits to round to. Now, you can call it whatever you want to, but I suggest keeping it nice and short. RT is what I'm going to do. Okay, fabulous. So now... I'm going to click on cost estimate, and I want to round this number to these digits. I can't quite do that with the user interface, but we can get awfully close. So I'm going to head over here. Uh, I'm going to leave transform and go to add column, making sure a cost estimate is selected. And now I'm going to go round. Before I did round down, we're not going to do round down. We're going to do round dot, dot, dot. Now, what I would like is in this dialog box to be able to pick that column right there, but I can't do that. So I'm just going to type in zero and then modify the code that it, it spits out. Okay, so I'm going to round uh, that number to zero decimal places. Not quite what I want, but it'll write the code for me. I go ahead, click OK, and boom, now I've rounded the dollar to zero decimal points. Not what I want, not what I want, but that's okay. Notice it wrote this code for me that has almost everything that I want. Now, if you can't see the formula, head up here to View and turn the formula bar on. You're going to need to have the formula bar on. Even if you hate the formula bar, you have to turn it on for just about 10 seconds. Speaking of which, here in the code, we can see that we're rounding the cost estimate to zero decimal places. We'll click here, and uh, where it says zero, select that, do delete, 
add open square brackets and uh, whatever the name of that column is right there, RT. I told you to keep it short, so I hope that you did. Now, uh, on mine, depending on what version you've got, when I op when I added the open square brackets, it automatically added the closing ones for me. If you're on an older version, you're going to want to make sure that you've got those closing square brackets. And then when you're all done, just hit the little checkbox. And boom, just like that, I round to two decimal places, right? Good. That's exactly what I want. Now, uh, the name of this column, round, uh, is also not very good. Clearly, I could just double-click on the column and rename it that way. But, you know, as long as I'm modifying the formula up here, if you go to the left of this each, it says round right there in those quotation marks. Well, that's just the name of the new column that we're going to add. So I'm going to double-click on that, right? And I'm going to change the name from uh, round to cost estimates rounded. By the way, if you can't get the double click to work, just click so the cursor's in there somewhere and select the stuff between the uh, double quotation marks. Okay, so I'm going to call this cost, cost estimate rounded. You can call it whatever you like. There we go. Okay. Now, uh, if I want to change the number of digits I'm rounding to, I could come to this uh, additional units to round to step and click on the little gearbox. And if I say, you know what, uh, I've got one additional digit, I want to keep two additional digits, right? I could type in two right there. And so one plus two, is a, so two additional digits means three digits. If I come down here to the bottom, now we see that we're rounding to three places, okay? That's how you do that if you want to. The more digits you add, obviously the closer this number is to that number, right? You'll get fewer rounding errors. Uh, however, you also have more distinct values. You want to find a sweet spot where you just keep as many decimal places as you need, right? Now, just to show off the compression you get when you round this to two, I'm going to come back here to my gearbox and change this from two to one. So we get one additional decimal, decimal point, right? Now I'm going to come back here. Good. Now what I want to do is I want to get rid of these two columns, right? If I want to increase my compression, I want to get rid of this column that has all these unique values in it. Also, I don't need that at all. So I'm going to click on cost estimate, and I'm going to control click on RT. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to do remove columns. There we go. Okay. Now, uh, that's it. That's all I got to do. I head up here to home. I'm going to do close and apply. And I'm going to wait uh, for this thing to load. should take just a second. Hey, there we go. Okay, so now... Uh, our, our old estimates table is still there, right? We have the original where we have the stuff that's non-rounded, right? Uh, now, if we come over here to estimates rounded, we'll see uh, that there's a lot of duplicate values because that's how it's storing the data so that it can, incom so that it can increase the overall compression, right? Now, uh, for what it's worth, if you'll notice on both of these tables, there's a location column, right? And there's also a location table, which will allow us to bridge these two tables together so that we can compare them. Speaking of which, let's head back to the canvas. Head back to the canvas. So uh, right now, the basic version of this has about three hundred twenty-two uh, million uh, dollars of cost estimate. I guess I should show that as a dollar, but whatever. This is close enough. So now uh, let's take our estimate rounded and put it side by side, just so we can see what the number is and how far off it is. It won't be exactly the same, but it should be pretty close. So let's take cost estimate here. I'm going to take this and drop it right next to cost estimate there. Right, And so we have the original, the non-rounded version, and the rounded version. If we see down here at the totals, we get 322,611, 322,603. So you can see there is a difference between these two numbers. And in pure dollars and cents, you know, that's a lot of money. But if these are estimates anyways, that's pretty darn accurate, right? So we're, you know, well underneath a percent of, of difference between the unrounded and the rounded version, right? Now, here's the important part. Here's, here's where it gets more interesting, right? This here is a distinct count of the number of values in the original version, and we got about you know 930,000, which means almost every single value is unique, which means compression is terrible. If we head over here to the estimates rounded version, I'm going to take this same column, and I'm going to drag it to the very bottom of my stack right here, right? And I'm going to change my aggregation by clicking on this little downward caret. I'm going to change it from sum to count distinct. See how many distinct values there are, right? I go from 930,000 distinct values to about 910. So like a 1,000-fold decrease in the number of distinct values, right? So uh, assuming that these numbers are close enough where it doesn't matter because they're estimates anyways, the uh, size and hence the performance of this column is going to be way, way, way better, right? So just to show you that a little bit more, I'm going to head up here to External Tools. You're going to need DAC Studio for this. If you don't have it, you can just obviously watch the video. And I'm going to head over here to DAC Studio, pop this open, and I'm going to go look at the size of these two tables. 
Now, since the only difference between them is the size of the call, we can kind of just focus on that. Okay, good. So here's my model. I'm going to head up here to Advanced, and I'm going to do uh, View Metrics. Well, when I do, notice the size, the uh, difference in the size of the tables, right? So this is 52 uh, million. This is 1 million. They're very, very, very close. And if I, uh, or I should say, they're very, very, very far away. You get a, a much, 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 much smaller uh, table using this amount of compression, right? Okay, so uh, this is important, A, because the size of your model is smaller. That's nice. But almost more importantly, its uh, performance is going to be way, way better. So if somebody has to interact with this report, uh, they're going to have a much nicer version uh, or much nicer experience using the rounded version. And uh, this is with a an example that has 1 million rows. The more rows you have, the better this compression is going to work, which is another way of saying, if you've only got 10,000 rows, don't waste your time doing this. If you've got a million, you can already start to see the benefit. If you've got you know 100 million rows worth of data, this becomes a very, very powerful way to take that huge table and compress it down without losing much uh, fidelity in your numbers. Again, if you go look at the numbers, right, they're, they're actually pretty darn close. Now, if you go to that step, that I pointed out before, if you increase the number of uh, decimal points that you keep, obviously these two numbers get closer together, but the compression gets a little bit worse. So you really have to find your sweet spot. I suggest starting at uh, rounding to two decimal places, see if that's okay with end users. If that doesn't work, three is actually usually kind of the best compromise between the two. Once you get over three, um, the compression isn't nearly as good, but again, you know, you have to find the number that's right for you. Okay, that's a great way uh, to improve the performance of your model, decrease the size. Uh, I sh it's also pretty darn easy to implement, I think. Uh, so I sure do hope all that was helpful, and I will see you in the very next video.